Okay, this is going to be kind of one of the lastish things besides all the file video though is, and this is going to be the short tour through the block thing. If there is any one habit, I have to say that it is worth picking up. It is any time you deal with repeating shape to think very quickly and um, just out of habit, should I make a block or a component out of it? And when I do that, what kind of layering should I use? And you can always go back and do things uh, and correct, but that sense that unless you have another reason to do otherwise, you draft your layers on zero. Unless you have another reason to do otherwise, you make them fit into a one by one unit if it's going to be a schematic. Now you're going to see that in the example that AutoCAD provides, a lot of things are at 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And so besides the drafting at one to one, more important that is that when you do shift right click option, sorry, not shift right click, but when you do right click your object snap settings, which are here. Interesting, this isn't even set up for that. Wow. Shift right click, sorry. Nope, it's, this is not set up for that. So when you go to snap settings, For instance, your snap and your grid, when you go into that, polar snap on settings, when you go to here, that your grid and your snap are set to the same as your blocks and that they are also set the same to each other and that you turn them on and off together. I don't know that F7 and F9 are going to work, but you try to turn them on and off at the same time. There's going to be a lot of other things you're going to be realized you can use polar snaps and the like, but if you're going to use grid and snap, they both should be on and they both should be set to the same thing. So uh, the other one command that I think is worthwhile looking at right now is just this AD, design, AD Center, which is AutoCAD Design Center. That is just a way to manage and deal with blocks and organize drawings. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but you more or less want to keep your blocks that you carry around in one particular directory. If you remember when we do I for insert, I for insert, I for insert, can't let your mouse go too long without turning off your keyboard. So I for insert, I for insert. Remember I for insert in most AutoCAD programs will do an insert. I don't know what it's going to do here. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to type in insert. And I'm when we do that, remember you can browse out to different things, worry about the units, etc. But here is how you go about making blocks as opposed to just pulling them in. I'm going to make these at a, 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 a scale of one. So I want to go ahead and make special layers that begin with something like blocks. So I'm going to go here and add block border, block body. And I'll just go with those two. Now, again, we're going to do everything else on layer zero when we do this. But I'm going to go ahead and do the block border right here. I'm going to go ahead and make a box rectangle from here at 1, 1. That is going to, now if you notice, I see my snap and my grid are both on. I'm going to, I can't use those F7, F9, unfortunately, so I'm just going to turn on grid ortho and off. All right, because of the, the keyboard kind of conflicts between my screen sucker, Camtasia, um, and CAD. So that is basically, you're going to put that, generally, that's going to be just this nice one to carry around block border. But if I'm going to put a, something on here, I'm going to really try to put it on layer zero. It's the universal chameleon, so let's say I was going to have a circle. I'm going to go with the mid between two points, between the midpoint of that and the midpoint of that. So that would be my center. I'm just going to kind of do that. And I'm just going to offset through a couple circles right now. You'll realize very often you'll also want to put some points on here that you can turn on and off. Points are the only uh, at object entity that has a node snap. So I can go this minus layer new block underscore point and I'm going to put a point at the midpoint of there, a point at the midpoint of there, a 
a point at the midpoint of there and a point at the midpoint of there. Now remember, later on you'll be able to change how you see those points by PD display. But these are going to be these snap points to be able to get to. Those, of course, were put on layer 0. I might want to take those and put them on layer something else. So I'm going to grab this. Hold my shift, I think, and add. I'm not holding the shift. I'm just going to grab them all, take them all, and put all those points on that block point layer. Now, finally, what you call your insert point is a really important thing. So what I tend to want to do is I just do a minus B to make a block. You can do a, all kinds of different things. And you want to think about your insert point. Now, something like this, you might think of the insert point being there. But on these grids, you'd really like to grab the bottom or the side or whatever you're going to do. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm going to say minus B for block. Block name will be mark marker. Get good at front end loading, underscoring and actually even capitalizing below or having some system system assertion base point I'm gonna go with a node if you remember anything only a point has a node I'm gonna grab all my objects and there they go now if I need to change something in that I can actually do something called B edit mark one I go out here and this gives me that ability to make any kind of changes especially when you get into something called dynamic blocking which is really this huge huge trend alright now if you remember this Stuff here is on block border. These were on zero, and then the points were on something else. This shows your insertion point. I'm going to close my block editor. And now, why put stuff on layer zero? Here's why. I can now go to any layer I want. Let's say I want to go to the object layer. And this time, if I hit, that one was turned off. If I hit, set that to be my layer, and I do I for insert, it's going to come in and grab the chameleon of that layer. So it's going to bring that in and put it there. And I guess grab the wrong block, so that was pretty obvious. I'm going to I for insert. Let's grab the correct block, mark one. Hit OK, and notice how it's traveling along there. I'm going to bring that in. And now you start to see where layering is. I'm going to turn off the layer on the block border. I don't want to see that. You know, I, I Sometimes I can eventually get rid of those, but they're a good idea to get around. And I still see even those other points out there, which I can change by, look, if you want to see them more, change the PD mode, or change the PD mode back to zero. Anything you might want to do, there's all kinds of value there. Now, I'm going to point out here now how the grid and snap come into all this. If you think before, I talked about grid and my settings. If they're set to 0.5, 0.5, and I turn them both on, right, and I change the limits, limits from 0, 0 to 1,000, comma 1,000. The limits in a drawing, now when you zoom out a little bit here, I have no idea where I am. I'm going to hit a regen. You notice here, snap is on, but grid is not. So that idea of my, when I keep on hitting regen, these things should densify. And you notice here that it gets really jumpy. The fact that you're turning grid and snap on at the same time by cording the F7 and the F9. In this case, however, the grid and the snap are not set the way my block is, so I really want to go in and change the settings. I would like them to be 1 and 1 and 1 and 1 here as well, which means now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get rid of that right now, which I can't. So then I've got to very often learn how to turn these on and off at once, so I can go ahead and erase something, turn them back on again in this program. And now when I go through I for insert, grab my mark one it's going to tend to grab exactly where I want try it again mark one I'm grabbing that snap point rotation zero same thing again same thing again and you can have your very often get the basic blocks in and then connect them up turning off snap and grid so if I turn off now both snap and grid I still have that what would be called my points there so I can still do a line from the node it's going to dig into my block and find that node there to the node here 
Remembering, of course, that insert aligned from an insert is the place where that block was placed. So the block can only have one insert point. So this kind of layering levels or layers inside a block besides layer zero can really be helpful if you've got complex blocks with a lot of for sense wire leads or something coming in. Pretty useful. So those are our trips. Big thing, keep your snap and your grid set to whatever your block. The ones in the CAD come in point four. So be aware of that. Thanks for listening.